In terms of the power calculations, uh, we can calculate its power efficiency. Uh, power efficiency is defined as the ratio of the average power delivered to the load divided by the average power provided by the supplies or power out divided by power in times 100%. So power efficiency new is going to be equal to power delivered to the load divided by power uh, provided by the supplies. I'm just going to represent it as P sub S times 100%. Now in this case, since we have a sinusoidal signal, uh, we will need to average those powers over an entire cycle. Now in terms of uh, the power delivered to the load, if we neglect crossover distortion and we assume that the uh, signal that's provided to the load is a perfect sinusoidal signal, we can approximate the power delivered to the load as it being one half of uh, peak output voltage times peak output current. Now the peak output current is going to be the peak output voltage divided by RL, and so we can also express this as one half of the peak output voltage squared divided by RL. And now we need to calculate the average power delivered by the supplies, and we have two supplies, VCC and negative VEE. VCC will be uh, delivering power during the positive half cycle, VEE will be delivering power during the negative half cycle. So if I calculate my um, supply power first from V plus, it's going to be equal to, and uh, if we take the average of that sinusoidal signal, it will be 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to half of the period, because we're only considering the positive half cycle of uh, the value of the supply, VCC, times ICN, the current flowing through the entrance system, which is the only one conducting during the positive half cycle, times DT. I can further express this as uh, 1 over T, 1 over the period, the integral from 0 to T halves, VCC times and the current flowing through that Q and transistor during the positive half cycle is all going to flow through the load resistor since QP is in cutoff, so there's no current flowing through QP. So I can express ICN as the current flowing through the load in CT. And the current flowing through the load, we have already seen that it's going to be equal to um, VOP divided by RL. So if VOP is a sinusoidal signal, sorry, VO divided by RL. So if VO is a sinusoidal signal, um, we can express it as VOP times the sine of omega t. So I'm going to do this in two steps, 1 over t, VCC times V out divided by RL. times dt, which will be 1 over the period, the integral from 0 to t halves, vcc times v out peak divided by rl times the sine of omega t, and I can express omega as 2 pi over the period times t dt. Now, I can uh, go through some mathematical steps, mathematical manipulations of this expression, which we will not get into details now, but basically uh, knowing that we are going to use the expression using uh, the following relationship. That the uh, integral of the sine of a, con a constant a times x, the x is equal to negative 1 over a times the cosine of ax. We can see what we have inside that integral is a sine of a constant to pi over the period times, in this case, t, because t is our um, variable of integration. Uh, we can express that as 
negative 1 over uh, 2 pi over t times the cosine of 2 pi over t times t. And so using that and after uh, several mathematical steps, we arrive at the following expression that the power, average power delivered by the positive supply is equal to um, 1 over pi times VOP divided by RL times VCC. And uh, the reason why the sign has disappeared, maybe we should just do one more step so that we don't get lost here. Uh, but the first one will be, this will be equal to 1 over or negative 1 over 2 pi times uh, the constant VOP divided by RL times VCC times the cosine of pi minus the cosine of 0. And since the cosine of pi is equal to negative 1 and the cosine of 0 is equal to positive 1, then that becomes um, minus 1 minus uh, 1 becomes negative 2 and when we multiply that times negative 1 over 2 pi we end up with the 1 over pi VOP times RL times VCC. So this is going to be the average power delivered by the positive supply over the positive half cycle. Um, over the negative half cycle the um, average power delivered by the positive supply is going to be 0 because the negative supply is the one that's playing a role during the negative half cycle. And assuming that the supplies are uh, symmetrical around zero, meaning that negative VEE is equal to indeed negative VCC, then the average power delivered by the negative supply is, is going to be equal to this quantity. So assuming negative VEE, is equal to negative VCC, then we will have that P, the average power delivered by the negative supply, will be equal to the average power delivered by the positive supply, or 1, ha, one over pi VOP divided by RL times VCC. So the overall power delivered by the supply, um, PS, is going to be twice that amount, it's going to be the sum of the two, and therefore, 2 over pi VOP divided by RL times VCC. So now we have an expression for the power, average power delivered to the load up here, and average power delivered by the supplies. And we're ready to calculate our uh, power efficiency, which then just becomes... Uh, PL average divided by PS average. And when we um, do the ratio of those two quantities, we end up with pi fourths times VOP divided by VCC. So this is the generic um, power efficiency expression for this push-pull configuration, again, assuming symmetrical supplies, uh, and also uh, ignoring or neglecting the crossover distortion. And we can see that if we make those approximations, uh, the maximum value of the power efficiency is going to occur for the maximum value of VOP. And assuming that we were able to drive um, the peak voltage all the way uh, to the supply voltage, VCC, So if we equate VOP to VCC, then we will get our maximum power efficiency, which again, it's a theoretical maximum power efficiency, uh, but it will be um, pi, ha pi fourths times VCC over VCC, which is just one. So therefore equal to pi fourths, which is uh, 0.785 or 78.5%. So quite an improvement with respect to the class A configuration. If you remember, 
uh, the maximum theoretical power efficiency out of a class A configuration was uh, 25%. And by using this configuration, we have improved it to 78.5%. So we have just taken a look at the, some of the power calculations for the class B push-pull configuration. Uh, we have come up with expressions for the average power delivered to the load, the average power provided by the supplies, and uh, the ratio of the two will be the power efficiency. And we have seen that they can achieve a maximum theoretical power efficiency of 78.5%. Uh, Whereas for the class A output stage, it was the maximum theoretical power efficiency was 25%. So we can see it has overall better power efficiency than a class A output stage, but worse linearity because uh, in this case, there is the crossover distortion. The last thing that we will be interested in uh, being able to calculate as circuit designers would be the maximum power that gets dissipated into each transistor. And that is important because when we're selecting these transistors, we need to pay special attention to their power rating. So in order to calculate the power dissipated in the transistors, we will need to take uh, the difference between the power provided by the supplies minus the power delivered to the load. Now, usually that difference is what's going to be uh, dissipated in the output stage, or in this case, the NMP transistors. And so this will be 2 pi times VCC over RL times VOP minus one half of VOP squared divided by RL. And we can see that this is a function of VOP, which is the peak output voltage. We wanted to calculate uh, the maximum value of that power dissipation. We will have to take the derivative of that expression for PD and equate that to zero. And so we will take the derivative of PD with respect to VOP equal to zero. And if we do that, we come up with um, the value of VOP being equal to two over pi times VCC. So this will be the value of the peak output voltage that will give us the maximum power dissipation in the transistors. And if we calculate the power dissipated in transistors under those conditions, uh, we come up that under those conditions, the power dissipated in the transistors is 50%. And so that will be uh, the value of the peak output voltage that will give us uh, the worst efficiency, if you will, the maximum power dissipation in the transistors, and it will be an efficiency of 50%, or power dissipation of 50%. If we were to plot the expression for the power PD versus VOP, it will look something like this. Obviously, the power dissipated will be equal to zero uh, for, for an output voltage of zero, because the transistors will always be in cutoff. Um, but it reaches a maximum, and that maximum is reached at the value of output voltage. As we have said, uh, peak output voltage equal to 2 over pi times VCC. And at that point, the power dissipation is 0.5 or 50%. And therefore, at this point, we will have mu equals 50%. And then the point at which you achieve um, the maximum efficiency will be, as or the one that we have calculated, is when uh, VOP is equal to VCC. Maximum output swing, uh, or maximum theoretical output swing. And in this case, uh, as we have calculated, mu will be equal to 78.5%. So this is what the... Um, the power dissipation across the transistors will look like.